So I think this might actually be worthy of a why do people laugh at creationists? Because it's just so lulsworthy. I mean, never underestimate the stupidity of people in large groups. And honestly, this makes my previous busted videos seem like small potatoes. You know, solar roadways, a paltry $2 million. Self-filling water bottles, 300,000. Hoverboards, another 300,000. The Ark Encounter, $100 million. And now his $100 million project takes advantage of millions of dollars in tax breaks. To work on the Ark Encounter, job applicants have to sign a strict statement of faith, agreeing, for instance, that the Great Flood of Genesis was an actual historic event worldwide in its extent and effect. And remember, they were going to compete with Disneyland. This was going to be the Christian version of Disneyland. Imagine if we were to rebuild Noah's Ark, the size of the Ark, out of wood, to look like a real boat. It's really time for Christians to do something of this size, of this quality, that competes with the Disneys and the Universals to give a message to the world. It's dimensions straight from the pages of Genesis. It's meant to make a statement that Christians can build a major attraction like this. But Ham knows this ship can sail. He predicts the Ark Encounter will attract one to two million visitors in the first year alone. I think we're going to see more people here than we ever dreamed possible. Ham expects two million people to visit the attraction every year. So as I upload this video, the $100 million Ark has been open for almost a year. And of course, there's no possible chance that God would let his most devoted creationists fail now. Is there? It does kind of have a field of dreams quality. If you build it, they will come. Yes, we really do believe that if we build it, they will come. Uh, uh, spoiler alert, they don't. But before we get to that, let's take a look at what you can learn at the Ark Encounter. Yes, apparently one 600-year-old man. On the 17th day of the second month of Noah's 600th year, to actually build it in a biblical way is fantastic. Made one of these ships about 4,000 years ago. And just to show it was possible, they used the labor force of not one man, but a thousand and took two years. So that's give or take 2,000 man years of labor. Or for another back of the envelope calculation, you know the Ark cost $100 million to build. So if you make the first degree approximation that you're essentially mostly paying for labor in one way, shape or form, you know, even when you're buying materials, you're mostly paying for the labor of the person who made it. So for a typical US salary of $40,000 per year, you'd still be looking at over 2,000 man years of labor going into this thing. And that's 2,000 man years of modern labor where they have first world infrastructure, you know, trucks to bring in the materials. A world where you essentially have to spend no time worrying about where your food's going to come from. And using power tools of almost every sort. Whereas, of course, in the biblical world, you would have spent most of your time trying to get enough food to not starve in winter. 2,000 man years of labor. Using giant monster trucks and big ass cranes so they could have an exhibit where an animatronic Noah tells you that it took him several decades to build the ark. Took us several decades to build the ark. But that was after years of designing, collecting supplies. So uh, let, let's be generous and say 50. And let's give Noah the labor of all of his kids. You know, a workforce of about 10 or something. So he's getting about 10 years of man labor per year. So in 50 years, he would have had about 500 man years of labor. And somehow they managed to build the ark with one quarter of the manpower using nothing but their hands four times quicker than Ken Ham using a thousand modern day laborers with massive hydraulic cranes and so forth. Oh, bravo, Ken. That is definitely a joke worth a hundred million creationist dollars. And of course, as they leave the ark, it's time to sell the rube something. Because in the Bible, of course, you'll remember that Jesus threw out the moneylenders from the temple, saying, make not my father's house a house of merchandise. As people exit the ark on the lower deck, they'll then go down a ramp into a very large gift shop. A house of merchandise where you can buy all of Ken Ham's latest apologetics. A very unique 
collection of gifts in here, including a large range of the basic creation apologetics books that Answers in Genesis produces. Well, here I am on the roof deck of the biggest timber frame structure in the world. The ark itself is basically standing on top of these concrete pillars. This massive boat is being held up. Now the religious folk had predicted, presumably after consulting with God, that the Ark Encounter was going to be fantastic for local businesses. It's been seven months since the 510-foot-long Old Testament boat was launched on a Grant County prairie. Downtown Williamstown, which was expecting increased car and foot traffic, has almost as many empty storefronts as occupied storefronts. What's it meant for downtown Williamstown? Nothing. Indeed, the local town provided some $60 million in bond for this. I was one of these believers that when the ark came, it was just, everything's going to come in. Then it's not done it, Joe. It's not done it. But for some strange reason, possibly Ken not praying hard enough, it doesn't seem to have happened. The ark's success has not had the ripple effect many hoped it would. Grant County is teetering on the edge of bankruptcy. Now, the main reason for this, of course, is that nobody's turning up for the Ark Encounter. Early on, they were predicting they would get about 2 million visitors a year. That's about 5,000 people per day. Ham hopes for 2 million visitors in the first year. Which mm, they reckon they got on the opening week. But even at that, you can tell just from the car lot size in the cars, this wasn't exactly a raging success. Hell, even the pictures taken by Answers in Genesis were taken to conceal the fact that there's an entire empty car lot. You know, the one that the drone's hovering over. And that was opening weekend. Hell, even by their own numbers, they're three quarters the way through their first year, their big year. And they've only had about 600,000 visitors. A staffer said they have had about 645,000 to date. That puts them on target for getting less than a million visitors in the first year, if they're lucky, and assuming they're being honest about their numbers. Looking at the bookings for uh, the future and looking at the group bookings, I would say we're well on target to hit our minimum of 1.4 million up to 2.2 million, as the research has suggested. Yes, honestly, if that's opening weekend, it's not quite drawing the crowds. Now, sure, part of this might be that Creationists cannot live on faith alone, and so entry for an adult into the park is about $40 and 30 for a kid. Of the Ark, costs $42. $42 to get in. Which means for a family of four, you'd be looking at about $150 just to go see the Ark encounter. And they spared no expense, no expense on incredible restrooms. Then, of course, there are folks who have actually turned up and videoed the queuing area, which seems a little over-designed for the actual number of people who were turning up. Nobody here. So they got all sorts of video screens down here in the queue area. I guess they expect quite a few people because this is a pretty large queue, but they got a nice sound system. So below the arc is this very large queue which really is not there's not a lot of people in the queue line and we also have a 1500 seat restaurant so here we are at the Ark park dining room it's just after noon on thursday and you can see the place is completely empty nobody's here <laughs> not quite the big draw they'd been praying for now, before all of this, Ken seemed rather open to the idea of inviting atheists to come. Ham hopes for two million visitors in the first year. And scoffers and critics be damned. Well, they, they can scoff all they want. Uh, they can be critical all they want. You know what? I invite them all to come here. However, later on, there seems to have been a change of heart about this. I get to go backstage? It's a video one of the exhibits not allowed. In what exhibit? Any of them. The one, any of the ones with video or whatnot. So, you need to go ahead and delete the footage that you took off of the Yeah, videos. that's not going to happen. This is a telephone. Yes, sir, I understand. And there's a lot of people taking video and you're pulling me out. They're not taking video. Yes, they are. I was just sir, talking to people. Sir. Okay, I am back in my truck. They escorted me off the property, put me in a police car, and 
drove me about one mile back to my truck. And yes, this was their first year, which should have been their big year. You know, opening weekend stuff. So why would Ken kick an atheist out of the park, I hear you ask? Well, apparently he thinks that God's plan for the Ark Encounter has been derailed by unfavorable coverage by atheists. Recently, a number of articles in the mainstream media, on blogs and well-known secularist group websites have attempted to spread the propaganda to brainwash the public into thinking the Ark Encounter is a dismal failure. Incidentally, Ken, I'd lay off words like propaganda and brainwashing if I were you. Next time somebody says millions of years ago, what do you say to them? Yeah. We're dinosaurs on the ark? Yeah. On what day of creation were dinosaurs made? Yeah. Six days. Okay, um, can you add millions of years into the Bible? No. If there really was a global flood, what would you expect to find? Billions of dead things buried in rock layers, laid down by water all over the earth. But what happens when somebody says millions of years? Oh, were you there? Well, I think we've thoroughly taught you. Sadly, they are influencing business investors and others in such a negative way that they are preventing Grant County, Kentucky from achieving the economic recovery that its officials and residents have been seeking. Yes, apparently atheists laughing at all the dinosaurs on the Ark Encounter. Put your hand up if you agree dinosaurs went on Noah's Ark. That's great. Here's the thing. 46% of Americans believe the story of Genesis is true. The why the Bible is true exhibit. The Ark Encounter's newest exhibit, a graphic novel version of the Christian message called Why the Bible is True. So taking God at his word in Genesis, dinosaurs lived beside people about 6,000 years ago. And the Bible tells us that there was a global flood and two of every kind of land-dwelling, air-breathing animal went on board the boat that Noah built. Do you believe that Noah took one of these onto the ark? Well, the Bible says Noah took two of each kind. It seems like if you took one of those on board, everything else might as well stay home. <laughs> Yes, apparently the unfavorable coverage of uh, the secularists was enough to completely scupper God's plans, to scupper the plans of the most powerful being in the universe. Well, I guess that is actually kind of biblical, seeing as the God of the Bible couldn't even overcome people with iron chariots. And I'm also amazed, too, at the way in which God has brought together hundreds of talented people in a miraculous way to make this happen. 